guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We're back in my favorite filming location because guess what? We have that one fan favorite of a sedan from Mercedes-Benz that's getting some major changes. This is it. This is your 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300. But before we get into this freshly revised, smaller size sedan, let's talk about what's going on here. Mercedes-Benz. You know that decades and decades they have proven that they know luxury, they definitely know style, and they know performance. You look at Formula One, even to this day, the Mercedes team is winning championships, winning Grand Prix day in and day out. Now the wonderful thing is, is that they're going to take all that great recipe of engineering, technology, and of course style, and bring it into their street going vehicles. This being the C-Class falls on the smaller side and it's kind of interesting if you've ever wondered like if you didn't have your Captain Crunch decoder ring and you're trying to figure out what does the letters on the back of a Mercedes-Benz mean when you see A, C, E, S, so on and so forth, that's telling you what class vehicle it is and what size it is. So A is going to be the smallest, next up is C, then we have E, and of course we got the larger full-size luxury sedan, that OG of a luxury sedan known as the S-Class. Now for 2022, they've gone through the whole outside, definitely gone over the interior, but what I want to find out is, if you're comparing this to two of the main competitors in this class, that being of course the BMW 3 Series, and that's going to be the BMW 330i for this particular one, or a newcomer, the Genesis G70. Are those two the way to go, or is this the best luxury sedan for the price? Let's go ahead, let's dive into the C300 and find out. Right off the bat, you're gonna notice the changes. And what I like what they have done is they've taken a lot of the styling from the S-Class and brought it to the smaller C-Class. So at the front of the business, you're gonna get a very unique shape that goes with the Mercedes styling today. And like I said, this kind of mimics what's on the larger, bigger brother. So you have your full LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps, and LED turn signals. I really love the way they have all the elements inside the housing looking really kind of futuristic. A Little bit of chrome, everything else is blacked out, but definitely an A plus on the headlight. Now, as you work your way down, this is gonna be a zonk filled area. Instead of there being any kind of corner air intake, any kind of air curtain or even fog lamps, what do we have? Fake vents. So this is gonna be a big zonk here. They do bring a little bit of horizontal gloss black, but it would have been nice to do something with this area. Like I said, even just making it an air curtain would have helped out with aero efficiency at the front, but I do love the way they take the front fascia and kind of angle it down towards the asphalt. Now, as we come across that iconic badge, the Silver Star. If you go back to Grand Prix racing and look at all of the greats that were in Mercedes-Benz products while they were racing in Grand Prix uh, tracks around the world, it was the Silver Arrows, the Mercedes Silver, Silver Arrows. We got that star, that Mercedes star. I like the way there's a little bit of chrome finish around the perimeter and also on the horizontal extensions as it branches out. You get a forward-facing camera, which is great. And I do like the way they just went flat black with the vertical stakes behind all of this ornamental work that they did on the front. It's got like a nice concave finish, but there's your forward facing camera. Working your way down, we do have functionality in the center. And you'll notice I love the way they take the body work, especially that it's color matched, extends it down at an angle, and then this lower lip extends out with a bit of chrome. Not, I'm not a big chrome guy, but I think that on this particular car, it works, and it's just a little sprinkling. It's like putting a little bit of sprinkles on your Sunday, and it tasting really good. Now, when we get up onto that low slung hood, we got the Mercedes-Benz badge, all of that history. You got a nice little subtle peak in the center, but the bigger thing to point out is that you got that traditional double bulge. So not only one bulge, but you get two bulges, one for you, one for your friend as you're driving down the road, Everything else is just gonna to go towards the A pillar. So definitely a sculpted front end. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So you're gonna notice these 19 inch wheels. 
I like the way there's not a, they're not AMG branded. So yes, there are AMG optional wheels you could get, but this is your basically your standard wheel on this particular one, 19 inch wheel. Love the machine aluminum, the gloss black. You got rotors that are over 14 inches in diameter, all four corners. And then another thing that I like is the tire size. So it's a 225 on the width with a good 40 series sidewall. So not too low, not too tall with these Pirelli P0 tires, but definitely clean. I think that's the, the name of the game with this style. Very clean German styling. Now, as we come down the fender, everything is smooth, kind of curves down towards the bottom portion. We're going to get color matched on the mirror caps, 360 degree cameras and your turn singles built in. The one thing I wish that it would have had is when you lock the doors, it doesn't have power folding mirrors when you lock the doors. So that to me is a little bit of a zonk, but I like the way they have the shiny bright metalwork top and bottom matches with what's at the front of the vehicle. Plus we have a little bit on the door handles. You'll notice on the lower portion, that nice body line that comes towards the rear. And then one thing that's also a big plus is that you have a standard size sunroof. Would have been nice. Let me know if you think that this should have had a panoramic sunroof. I think you're probably going to say yes, but you do have a standard size sunroof working your way towards the rear. This is a four Matic. What does that mean? It has all wheel drive. So you're getting power to the ground, all four corners. Let's focus on the rear tire for a second because these are 255s. So we got a little bit more meat, a little bit more rubber to meet the road and to grip you. And that's an all wheel drive system that sends power from the front to the rear and vice versa but I like the way the wheels are staggered with the width, just to give you a little bit more grip. And then coming around the back, we got some good things and we got some not so good things. My favorite thing is gonna be how they work the taillights. Just like the headlights, look at all the detail inside that taillight housing, full LED. We got our formatic badge, get ready for it. We're gonna do the five finger zonk test. Are you ready? One, two, three fake exhaust. So that's going to be definitely a big zonk on both sides are fake exhaust. I know some of you say, well, Joe, it doesn't make the back of the car dirty because of all the carbon buildup. Here's the thing. Just wash your car. And then all of that dirt comes off just like on your wheels. If your wheels are dirty, clean them. Just a little tip from me to you. But as we come across the back, I love this, just how sleek it is. Nothing stuck on the trunk. The simplicity and just putting the Mercedes badge on that trunk lid and then working your way down, we have a little bit of chrome and then there's that other fake exhaust on the driver's side. But taking a lot of style from the S-Class, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this C-Class. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have hydraulic hood struts. Underneath the hood, you're going to see a lot of plastic, but I think that's actually a good thing because this being a standard C300, it's got the smaller power plant. Now, what are we talking about underneath that engine cover? You're looking at a two liter inline four turbocharged engine pumping out 255 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a nine speed automatic. That's a conventional torque converter, automatic transmission with all wheel drive. Zero to 60 in about 5.3 seconds Quarter mile goes by at 14 seconds flat at 98 miles an hour. Top speed is governed to 129 miles per hour. MPGs in the city, 23 on the highway, 33. And the vehicle with the all-wheel drive weighs 4,044 pounds. So this being that entryway into the C-Class, of course, there are larger power plants, more horsepower in the C-Class form. Just like on the BMW, that's why we're comparing it to the standard BMW 330i and not the 340i. And of course, we're comparing it to the G70 that has the four-cylinder turbocharged engine. But while we go ahead, let's fire this up and hear if there's any fake noise that comes out of those fake exhausts.
All right, guys, we're inside this new redesigned C300. Now, before I go any further, there's three different trims that you can spec with your C300. You actually have Pinnacle, that is gonna be the top trim, but the entry level is Premium. Premium is your entryway, that's the lowest trim. Then you have Exclusive and then Pinnacle. Now, I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, what about price? I'm looking at a BMW, I've already spec them. How much is the C300? So base price on the Pinnacle is right around $46,000. This one has been specced out to $57,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the all new door panels. So just like in the S-Class, we have some new style, all soft, soft touch material. The one thing I'm a little troubled by is the amount of gloss black around all of that switch gear. You do have three memory seat settings and we have three stages of heated seats. We have the unique Mercedes-Benz seat controls up top. You got your aluminum speaker grill cover. I like the way they did the silver and that floating portion of the middle of the door panel. The stitching is nice. Door pocket is a pretty good size. I would say probably you could fit in there two Edmunds bun cakes and a nice bottle of milk to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, I'm really digging the style. Soft touch material. I'm liking the silver. And then the thing that I like even more is this almost like fish scale material. Instead of it being gloss black, it brings a nice sportiness, a nice classiness to the vehicle, but there's no fingerprints. We get to the center stack. You got that traditional setup that Mercedes-Benz brings with their aeronautical style AC vent. You'll notice some ambient lighting, which there's tons of ambient lighting in this vehicle, but I love the way they styled the AC vents. And then what do we have here? You have your 12.3 inch infotainment system screen. Now what's fascinating, it mimics exactly what the S-Class has. This one's a little smaller. S-Class is about 15 inches. This one is 12.3, but as you can see, you have your navigation with your little tiny Mercedes-Benz C-Class there. It's all touchscreen. You got your AC controls, of course, dual climate. And then what's really interesting is that they actually have a fingerprint scan where you could get into certain functions on the infotainment system. If I hit the little car here, that brings up all of the settings that you can adjust. Nice, easy to swipe features. We go into dynamic. What do we got? We got our different drive modes. You know what we're gonna be doing, leaving it in full sport mode. And then what about cameras? I throw it in reverse, super clear. I could actually count how many blades of leaves are on those palms back there. You got your 360, and then you could easily just adjust. I mean, look at that. Really, really cool. What would be cool is if it showed Steven here filming me right now, struggling trying to show the clarity on this infotainment system. But you know what? You put it in park, we're right back, you hit home, and here we are. Working our way down, you have that nice fish scale material. Open up the door, what do we get? Look at that, two cup holders. We got wireless charging and a place where you can easily stack two Twinkies in there. Don't do three because you're gonna bust cream all over this beautiful interior. I do like the new key fob. Very, very classy. Very nice touch on the key fob with that Mercedes-Benz star there. And then of course we got the Bombay doors. Bombs away! Two USB-Cs, felt lining. So what you could do is you could put your class ring in here and it's not gonna get scratched. Remember how you broke up with your girlfriend in high school and you had a fighter to get that class ring back because she used to wear it around her neck like a little charm, like a lucky charm? You could keep that class ring in here. Nobody's ever gonna take it from you ever again, I promise. Lock it up, seats, leather every, everywhere, nice stitching all the way down. You got a unique style the way they do the materials in here. And of course, like I said, it's power assist for the passenger, power assist for the driver, and then the cherry on top is gonna be that little bit larger than standard size sunroof. I would like to see a panoramic sunroof, so that's gonna be a zonk, and definitely at $57,000, where's my ventilated seats? But you know what? There's more to show coming over the business end. Let me show you behind the new wheel of the C300. All right, guys, business time behind the wheel. We get three memory seat settings, of course, for the driver. I like the way they have this nice, tasteful aluminum sill plate. We got the Mercedes-Benz name that lights up LED. And of course, we have the optional 
LED puddle lamps that make the Mercedes-Benz Star logo on the ground when you go and unlock your vehicle. It's almost like the bat signal for Batman to come out. That means your Mercedes-Benz is re ready to rock and roll. I'm six feet tall. This C300 has grown about 2.3 inches in length over the previous generation. So that's gonna give you a little bit more room, a little bit more room. We'll see what happens in the back seat. Plus the wheelbase is a little longer. And if you're wondering, well, what is wheelbase? That's the distance between the front wheels and the rear wheels on each side. But let's talk about the steering wheel. That's the most important wheel here. Leather all the way around. I do love the aluminum finish that they did. I wish that they would have done some stitching just to kind of make this not look like a rubber bumper that you'd find in a bumper car to bump your head off of. But you got that classic Mercedes-Benz logo staring you smack dab in the center. We do have some gloss black on the buttons. Not too crazy about it, but it is what it is. We do have flat black on the paddles. It would have been nicer if they would have taken the aluminum finish and put it on the paddle. So I am gonna zonk that, but we do have power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the dash, I almost have 12 inches. It's 11.9 inches of pure visual quality. Check it out. When you go and get into the system, you could actually easily change what shows in the center. So you're feeling sporty. You like popping your collar after work and you're feeling really sporty, you could put on the sport gauges. Or what's really nice is that you can go understated or we could bring up our navigation. Take that Audi's virtual cockpit. You'll notice that we have the shift lever right on the steering column, just like the good old days when my mom had a station wagon that I learned how to drive on. That really brings back some memories, just throwing that thing in a drive and just flooring it on throttle. Plus you got a head up display, but why don't we go ahead? They say that this C300 is longer. I'm gonna go get my measuring tape and measure it, but I wanna find out how much space is back there for your passengers. Let's go check All it out. Hi guys, we're inside the back seat of the C300. It's a little bit bigger. I was hoping for a little bit more room back here. I guess the good news is I'm pretty good on the headroom. Six feet tall and I'm feeling pretty good. I did not move the front passenger seat so you can see exactly how much leg room I have. But let's talk about what's going on back here with the rest of this. You do have these pretty good sized pockets. I say keep a couple books back here for your kids. Maybe some cat in a hat, maybe, um, I don't know, maybe you wanna go even bigger, go like 20,000 leagues under the sea, and I'll explain why. But some books would be nice. Kids need to read, they need to learn. But anyways, let's continue our journey. We got our rear AC vents. What I like about them is that they mimic the style of the ones up front. Double your pleasure, double your fun. We got two Twinkie trays, one here, one down below. The big zonk, no connectivity. That's why you're gonna wanna have the books back here because when your kids' iPads and you know iPhones and Android devices, when they die, when they run out of juice, you're gonna need something for them. Hopefully they're gonna to wanna to read. They need to read, like I said, please get them to read. But anyways, sitting back here in the back seat, it feels pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't wanna drive a thousand miles back here, but this is definitely good for that smaller family with smaller people. Pull the seat, the armrest down the center of the seat here. It's a pretty good softness. What's interesting is you got two stages. You actually have a phone, cell phone holder not a charger, a holder. And then what you do is you press it again, two cup holders. That's German engineering for you. Close it back up, seal it up, sign sealed, delivered with a kiss, of course. But why don't we go ahead, let's check out the trunk space and see just what kind of junk we could put in the trunk of the C300. All right guys, time to check out the trunk. What's nice about the top pinnacle trim is this one has a power opening trunk to make things a little easier. And what's incredible is they did a great job for a smaller sedan, making the opening nice and wide and a low cargo floor. We have our cargo net on the driver's side. This is for the emergency two box of Twinkies. You could easily put two box of Twinkies. We got our buttons, our switch gear to fold down the rear seats to maximize our space. And then, like I said, plenty of room in that cargo area. You're basically looking at a little over 13 cubic feet of space. But while we go ahead, I got the power trunk. I also have the power of this C300 since I have the keys. 
If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle. All right, guys, we're in this totally redesigned 2022 Mercedes-Benz C300. Right away, if you're wanting that Mercedes-Benz feel, fit, and finish, this C300, I think, really comes in at a good price point, and it's giving you all of those features. The best part is that infotainment system, the way that they took the style from the larger S500 and brought it into this C300, easy to get to, you got your navigation, your 3D, uh, three-dimensional cameras, the whole nine yards. On the dash, I was feeling a little sporty, and what's great is, is that I actually changed the instrumentation to showcase that. So the graphics, the fonts, the colors, really cool setup you of course have that eq boost gauge which this c300 has and remember to go into the modes very simple right now i'm on eco i don't want that i want sport so we hit that sport button that's going to adjust everything from steering feel engine response the whole nine yards i like the thickness of the steering wheel and the feedback that you get from it you know this is the kind of stuff like i was telling you about Lewis Hamilton doing the business on Formula One circuits, all of that engineering gets brought into their street going vehicles as well. But let's go on throttle here. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle. Pretty decent. I mean, zero to 60 around 5.4 seconds is nothing to laugh about. And of course, if you want more power, you can get more power. It is a little laggy off the line. So just something to be aware of, that if you want that quick, crazy, hard acceleration off the line, you're gonna have to step up to an AMG product. And you could do that with the C-Class, but this particular one, obviously it's about finding the proper balance for daily driving, also spirited driving, but also getting good economy as well. Now, if you don't like this sporty Tron craziness with a G meter and all the engine data and all that, you could change it back very easily. And to do that, you're just gonna hit the home button. And then while you're driving, you could go right back to classic, voila. And I actually have the eco display up. If you don't want eco and you wanna have maybe your Sirius XM channel, you have that very clear right in the center there, but let's go back on throttle. On throttle, here we go. Nine speed drops down on the brakes. Like I said, very controlled, very good compose, composure to the balance of the chassis. And I think what really makes this car drive really well is that it's based off of rear wheel drive. So, you know, you got all that power going from the rear to the front because of the formatic all wheel drive system. But having that chassis set up for that rear wheel drive bias, that's gonna allow you to have a little bit more um, steering feel and just chassis input feel in those twisty bits that uh, I know a lot of you like to enjoy just like myself. But everywhere you look, the changes feel upscale. I just wish there was just a tad more room in here. Not only up front, but also out back. Let's see how the horn works. So the horn works good. Give it a little tap there. Visibility out the front is great. You got your two bulges that you can stare at all day long. Visibility out the back, a little tight, but you know what? I think on this, the C-Class, that's just something that is part of that expectation. But I'm really digging the new infotainment system, especially the way that it's all integrated very cleanly. Instead of like the Audi uh, having that stuck on screen, obviously BMW with the 330i has that sort of floating iPad style. Same thing with the Genesis G70. Guys, I wanna take this uh, Mercedes Benz out onto the highways and byways and see how the road how the road is gonna affect the overall driving experience when you're cruising at highway speeds. What we're gonna be listening for is obviously how quiet it is in here. And I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with the way that not only because of extra sound ending material, but also because of the new chassis, that's gonna help with interior noise and vibration. 
You have that head up display, nice and clear, gives you the important information so you're not staring at the gauges. But if you need to look down at the gauges, that's the crazy thing is that there's not a lot of glare on the screen. I don't know what kind of voodoo magic they're doing, but normally most gauges have to have a hood to protect uh, you know, from the sun and give you a little bit of shade. But uh, these gauges, nice and large, 11.9 inches, like I pointed out, are very easy to see at a quick glance. But going down the road here, we're doing the speed limit, 55 miles an hour, and really nice and smooth. The seats are actually pretty good. I just was, like I said, thinking that at $57,000, this should have ventilated seats. Because it is a hot Florida summer day, and I am feeling a little toasty in here, even with the air conditioning on. But just something that it can be added. Yes, I know. I know people are going to put that in the comments. Well, you could option it. I understand that. I just think at $57,000, that option should already be in place. But if you're looking for an alternative, you can't go all the way up to the S-Class for whatever reason. I think for having the smaller sized C300, you're getting a lot of that same flavor. And I think that was a smart decision by Mercedes-Benz to do that. But hopefully this overall review has been good for you to give you those detailed uh, points, not only on the way it looks, but also the way it drives. We're going to get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a Mercedes minute. Guys, it's been a wonderful day with this Mercedes-Benz new C300. Definitely got to thank everybody at Mercedes-Benz USA for allowing Radies Rides access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Mercedes-Benz done what they've needed to do with the C-Class to make it the go-to over the BMW, over the Genesis, even throw in the Audi S4 as well. That is a competitor to the C300. But let me know where you would spend your money or which one tickles your fancy. But until we meet another day in another empty parking lot, hit that subscribe button. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give it up to the man behind the lens wearing his special sun hat to protect him from the ultraviolet rays. Thank you, Stephen, for your awesome work. You're so good with a camera, it's almost x-ray in its form. So thank you for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.